Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. Now this is a mini course in Golang, right? So this is a weather forecasting tool that we're going to be building. And uh, it's not a video series, it's a course in itself in the sense uh, it will last uh, about nine to 10 uh, small videos. And uh, if you were to go on Udemy and buy a course, you would almost get a similar type of content, right? In a course. So this, this is why I'm calling it a free course uh, for Golang. It's not a small video series, right? And this uh, course is not for complete beginners. Uh, it's for people who uh, know at least these topics in Golang, like structs, slices, functions, pointers, interfaces, range and loops, right? And routines and channels, at least the basics of uh, concurrency with routines and channels. So if you're comfortable with these topics, uh, this is the perfect uh, video series for you. Now, when I say weather forecasting tool, I don't uh, mean that we're going to be building like a machine learning or an AI algorithm that forecasts weather. We we're not going to be doing that, right? That will be an advanced tutorial. So this is not an advanced tutorial. This is for intermediate developers who have uh, a basic understanding of these topics in GoLang, right? What we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, calling uh, the Open Weather API, and we're going to be getting some information which will basically help us forecast uh, the weather. All right. Now. Um, what I'll do, I think, before before I show you this entire diagram or, or the plan on how we are actually going to be uh, working on this project, uh, what we'll do is I'll take you uh, to my uh, PowerShell and actually show you how the program works. So let's say if you were to say go run and dot, right? So it would tell me that this, uh, you've not used it pr uh, properly. So this is the usage. So you'll say go run and then you'll say minus period right and i have options of three periods current hourly and daily so i'll say daily and i have i can put units minus units is equal to uh, celsius because i want the weather to be in celsius and location so location we can enter pin codes here 411013 i'll enter my pin code and i'll enter some random pin code uh, all right, and let's see what happens. So it's going to give me the next seven days uh, weather forecast, All right? So today's uh, this date. This is the date today, but I get the uh, date. I get the next seven days for this location, which is the pin code, and for this location as well, I get the next seven days uh, information, right? So uh, I'm sure this looks very interesting to you, and this will be a great project to put on your CV, right? <laughs> if you're going to be a Golang developer, uh, this is a weather forecasting uh, tool that you're going to be building. And this is not going to be a very small series. Like I said, it's going to be a course in itself as in we'll have to write a lot of code to actually uh, get this uh, onto the screen, right? Now, now let me show you how we're going to actually be uh, tackling this entire project, right? So uh, we'll, we'll have uh, functionality in our program to handle two units, Celsius and Fahrenheit and three periods current hourly and daily right three types of frequencies we can uh, handle right so that th this functionality our program uh, needs to have all right and then what we're doing is we're sending the pin code right like you said uh, like you saw in the powershell so we're going to be sending the pin code the pin code is going to be uh, converted into a latitude and longitude value for that we're going to use the google geocode api so this is why this project is going to be long because we're going to be using two different apis so first we'll take the pin code we'll convert it into lat latitude and longitude uh, value and uh, we'll get some response it'll be the geocode response from google and then we'll have to decode it to get uh, something called as a result so these will be two different structs uh, for us so we'll have to create two different structs one to handle the response one to uh, decode the response and get the result right that we can use later on and this will be fed into uh, uh, a function that will get weather uh, forecast for the for the latitude and longitude, and that uh, function is going to basically call the open weather API, right? With that latitude longitude values. Now <clears throat> we're going to have three different structs. One will be for uh, handling uh, hourly weather. One will be for handling daily weather. One will be for handling current weather. And they will have their three different separate uh, output functions to format the response that we get from Open Weather API based on the structs that we have created, right? So we want the uh, data to be in a perfect particular format. You see the format here, right? So uh, the struct, uh, as in the data that we receive from Open Weather API for daily, is different from what we receive for um, uh, current 
is different from what we get for hourly, right? And the formatting has to be done properly, and that's that's why we need three different output functions right, for formatting it. So I hope this is clear till now. Now uh, I will when I start writing the code in the next upcoming videos, you need to. Uh, refer to this diagram all the time so you can keep this open in a tab uh, this video you can keep this open in a tab right uh, and look at the diagram while uh, when i you know basically create the code uh, in, the, in the upcoming video so that uh, when we're writing the code everything will make a lot of sense to you because you already have the entire plan out in front of you right yeah it won't confuse you at all and then uh, our main file will have so we'll have two files right one for the handling the google related stuff like calling the google api and doing all this stuff one for the open weather api and doing all this stuff right so we'll have two different files the third file will be our main file which will have our func main so and uh, another function that we'll have will be our invalid input exit in the sense if we don't uh, input anything proper it's going to exit right so that's the function that we need then we need our get weather for place uh, function which will get the weather for that place and then we need a concurrent get weather for place function so we'll uh, run routines and then we'll call these functions together so that uh, you know we can get uh, weathers of multiple locations in one go so i showed you with two locations two pin codes but you could do that for hundreds of locations and it won't take time because we'll be uh, using concurrency in golang right then you have your print weather result based on frequency so this will be the last function that we will create in our main file which will be the print uh, weather result so uh, the way we are going to code is we're going to jump between this file this file and this file we will we'll keep jumping between them and i'll uh, and before we even start coding i'll show you how to get this api in the first place the api token and for this for this you know how do you get those api tokens so that you can start setting up your constants and that's the general overview and like i said you know this is going to last for a while it's going to last for a few days uh, this whole series and it's going to take uh, a lot of patience and uh, uh, if you want to be notified when the next videos of the series come uh, come out then uh, you need to subscribe to this channel uh, because i come up with awesome content like this almost on a daily basis so you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel and uh, I hope you're excited for this. And if you're an intermediate developer, if you've just learned Golang, if you've learned, if you've gone through uh, the entire Golang tour, and if you have seen the other uh, starter-friendly, the beginner-friendly videos on my channel, then this, I'm sure, this will uh, really, uh, you know, excite you because this could be a great project to add to your CV. Right? And uh, thanks a lot for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode.